Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family story of our move to the south of France to a 53-room castle during COVID lockdown with two small children and all of our animals. Aside from the family and work, our life now focuses on the castle renovation, going and visiting sites in the local area, trying to pick up some French culture, and hopefully having some fun with our wonderful volunteers. Thanks so much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe. Join me as we take a look in the Napoleonic Entrance Hall. Here at the front entrance doors to the castle, Four and a half metres high, they've been carefully sanded down and have a first undercoat of microporous paint on them. Here we get our first glimpse of the entrance hall. The porch outside shows not only the battle scarring, but the work in progress on the main doors. And if you're inside trying to get outside, you'd see these two inner leather doors, again, four and a half metres high with ribboning on them, some of which is coming off, so I need to stick that back on again, bolted together to form both, I guess, a an insulating layer, and in addition to that, perhaps also some additional security. As we open them up, you can see here clearly the double doors, the main castle doors there, and also the fact that these are actually stuffed with horse hair there in order to provide, I guess, so what I wanted to do today on this chateau tour was show you one of the areas of the castle that is basically fully renovated. A lot of the castle is actually, so you tend to see the bits that we're working on. So here is the inside of those double doors that you've just seen from the outside. One of the things I think is particularly lovely is this giant key. And there's some lovely work here on that door handle, which does need a good scrub. As well as the main long bolt, there's one bolt, two bolts in the shape of little acorns. Please excuse the basking tape, but if you look, you can see the light showing how the air is coming through these handmade doors. So this is the view standing with those double doors behind me looking towards the double doors going into the ballroom or dining room. I think I've mentioned before about the floor which is handmade terracotta tiles with black volcanic lava tiles. They're really fun. Um, the carpet here is one that Ross and I bought which is a Persian rug that's signed. It's also very old and we were very lucky to find it. Ahead of us we have two Portuguese hand-painted tile mythological murals commissioned by the last owners and signed. And just here you have a marble-topped table. Here are the double doors leading into the grand salon with my study beyond that. And just to the right-hand side there's this hidden door here, I don't know if you can see it, which leads through to some other rooms and Ross's study. It's quite fun, I think. The grandfather clock to the left-hand side was a gift from my parents. It's actually English. You can see the huge curtains. They're for over four and a half metres in length there. And coming round to the right-hand side, you can just about see the grand staircase with the stained glass window part way up, which I really like. It reminds me of some of the work, although probably not as good as Tiffany's work, I do love the colours as they fly through the hallway on a sunny day. And I also really like the colours with the butterfly, the little bird you can see there. And, well, I think grapes, although it could be wisteria, but I do think it's grapes. It's just really, really fun. Coming back downstairs again, the double doors to the right you can see here are those going into the winter salon. I don't know whether you remember from an earlier episode where we were renovating and scraping the tessellated marble floor there, which is really quite beautiful. It's black and white, white, but sort of gives you a sort of uh, mind-blown effect as you're walking through. It's very confusing, but it's very interesting. On to the murals. So they're signed, they're very, very beautiful. We're very lucky to have them. Incredibly good artistry and brushwork here.
Now, I'm not sure which myth it is, so maybe somebody can tell me, but there's definitely an apple. There's some angels, there's Cupid there. Something to do with Aphrodite? Not quite sure, we need to find out. And look, actually, if you look in the top right-hand corner, I'll just zoom in, there is actually a peacock there. There we go. Just there. It's the first time I've seen him. As I say, I am quite short-sighted, so I do miss some detailing until I zoom in. Oh, look. There's a helmet there. Anybody, any ideas, any mythological buffs out there? And look, here's a signature of the artist, this one. Yeah, can you see who's in the middle? Um, when I started the intro of this video, behind us with a scene with dogs, again by the same artist actually. Let's have a look at this one. The light is really amazing. Ah, now do you think, who do you think that is? Do you think it's Apollo or somebody else? I'm not quite sure. Now, I don't know if the two scenes are connected or not. It's rather nice to have angels in the hall. Um, the entrance hall of this chateau has really been done to represent the power of the owner. This central piece alone is eight metres by eight metres squared. Justin Lawrence, the finance minister of France, from 1844 to 1848, lived here and died here in 1863. He was also the governor of Algeria in 1837. Here are the terracotta and black lava floor tiles. These have suffered water damage from when the oak tree grew through the centre of the castle. Whilst it's hard to see on the high traffic areas where it's been worn away, it's interesting that at the edges of the rooms where it's less worn, you can really see the bubbles and the patterns. It must have been quite a talking point. Now, the whole of this floor just requires some gentle cleaning and linseed oiling in order to bring it back to sparkling grandeur. The chateau in its current state is described as Napoleonic. So to give you an idea, here is Chateau de Malmaison, the private home of Napoleon and Josephine Bonaparte, which I think clearly demonstrates the style. This painting demonstrates Napoleon crowning his Josephine, Empress of France. Briefly the seat of French government, Josephine purchased the estate while her husband was off fighting in Egypt in 1799. When he returned from Egypt, architects were hired to renovate the house and grounds to its current state. It's not improbable to assume that Justin visited the estate and brought home some design tips. Just outside Paris, Malmaison is open to the public today. Back home again, here's the Napoleonic chandelier in the entrance hall. And the ceiling rose. You can see I need to get some new light bulbs, but it's quite a long way up. But I need to get organised and do that, and also needs a good clean. This is obviously a fully renovated space in the chateau, but I wanted to show you it anyway. Ross and I were talking, and I think we'll probably change the brown paint work um, into a different colour, but we're not quite sure what yet. You can see it just above the wood panelling and just below the, the rail at the ceiling there. So we're not quite sure what colour, but um, we need to have a good think about that. Something maybe to harmonise with the Portuguese tiles at the back. Anybody got any ideas? Let me know. These window openers are really fun. Finally, no visit to the castle would be complete without introducing you to Sprinter, our Lamassu or House Guardian. He sits at the foot of the stairs. We bought Sprinter in the UK, and as you can see, he's had a few battle scars himself. I've tried to give you in this tour of the entrance hall a look at all the details as if you were actually here with us and shown you around. So I really hope that I haven't missed anything and that you've enjoyed it. Coming up after this in a section, I have a little snapshot of a few parts of castle life generally here, which I hope you'll enjoy. But thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. In addition to the Chateau Tours, we also have episodes. So they're on separate playlists, so it should be easy to find your way around. Mm -hmm.